We began by noting that the information contained in Pasuk Bet is basically a repeat of that contained in Pasuk Aleph, which led us to the conclusion that there were two distinct gatherings at which time Yaakov addressed his 12 sons, each with a different agenda. We raised the problem that if that was the case, why does the Chumash not inform us as to the content of the Vagida Lachem et Yikra et Biachrit Hayamim? and for which the Gemara and Rashi propose that the information that Yaakov wished to convey to his sons in Pasuk Aleph required the involvement of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Shechina, the Shechina departed, and hence the absence of information. There was then a second gathering of his sons. We are not told of the time frame differential between the first and the second, at which point in time Yaakov blessed each of them for some referencing material that would eventuate in the short to long term. We also noted that the term Achrit Hayamim could on the one hand be code for the Messianic era, but is also used for prophecy that was to take place at some time in the future, not necessarily the Yemot HaMashiach. There is universal agreement amongst all that the Achrit Hayamim of Bamidbar 14.1 refers to the messianic era possibly because if we accept the alternative option a short to long term period prophecy we would then be left with the superfluous pasuk bet we also had two options for what it was that yaakov intended to inform his sons regarding the akrit hayamim one was a what option in other words details about the yimot hamashiach and a when option the timing of yimot hamashiach the Gemara and Rashi maintain that it was the when option, Bikesh Yaakov Legalot et Akets. Which brings us back to our original question, why is it that the Gemara and Rashi do not take a less problematic path regarding the Achrit Yamim, namely the what option, the repetition of information in Pasuk Bet could very easily be justified that for whatever the reason, Yaakov decided not to provide his 12 sons with that information, instead moving on to plan B, in which he blesses each of them. Uh, this reading of the text would certainly be less problematic than reading the when option into the Achrit Hayamim, which would require us to insert into the narrative that there was a departure of the Shekhinah that would explain why he then moved into plan B. In summary, what basis does the Gemara and Rashi have in maintaining that the Achrit Hayamim was a when option rather than the less problematic what option?